but it seems like we got quite a few people still joining in. Um, really excited that, that you all took the time today to, to tune in for this webinar with myself and Maria Claudia. Um, we've got some good content to share uh, over the next, you know, 30 minutes. And, you know, ideally you'll be able to walk away with one or two things that, you know, you can take a look at differently with your website or your payment process that you're doing right now. Um, a couple of quick housekeeping things. If everybody wouldn't mind uh, turning off their video uh, and the reason for turning off the video is so that you can just see myself and Maria Claudia at the top of your screen. Um, so it just cleans up the, the screen for you. And then also we're gonna do a Q and A at the end. Um, so any questions throughout the presentation, you know, please use the chat box uh, at the bottom and then we'll go ahead at the end um, and address everybody's questions and make sure uh, everybody has appropriate follow-up and stuff. So real quickly, wanted to, again, introduce myself. Uh, many of you on the phone right now uh, are familiar with me from previous webinars we've done uh, for this market here. Uh, Maria Claudia may be new uh, for some of the attendees that, are, that have seen some of our past webinars. She leads our Latin America growth uh, and has been doing that for the last couple of years. So Maria Claudia, if you could just quickly introduce yourself and just say hi. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, again, my name is Maria. I'm from Peru and I have been working for We Travel for the past two years and leading the expansion in Latin America. So for sure, I'm very excited to be here as I've been uh, participating in lots of events in this market. So happy to contribute now. Cool. Yeah, great to, uh, yeah, we were happy to put this on and yeah, happy you could join. I'm going to go through uh, the agenda really quickly here. And everybody you know, is aware from the registration form we send out, but the way we're gonna format this presentation, we're first gonna talk a little bit about the traveler's current thinking. We're gonna take a look at different surveys that have been done within the market over the last few months, and then pull out some three main focus areas that we'll form uh, this webinar on. Maria's gonna cover some really good website must-haves. You know, websites have been around for a long time, right? But um, they're constantly changing. And you know, COVID-19 has brought up some some new areas of the website that make sure to really double down and focus in on um, as and once travel, travel starts to recover. Um, we're going to briefly talk about mobile options uh, and then we're going to go through some key areas of WeTravel's booking technology. Uh, we do have some WeTravel clients on the call and we are going to be sending this um, to a lot of our clients afterward as, a, as another way to remind them of just some areas within our system they can utilize right now. Um, really help maximize their conversions uh, as they get to a request coming in. And then at the end, we're gonna go ahead and give some Q and A. So the first thing I wanted to point out here is, you know, just thinking a little bit about the current situation, you know, as everybody knows, travel is, is stopped in most cases. You know, there still is some domestic travel that's happening. We are seeing our wellness segment in the US market is still having some uh, momentum when it comes to domestic travel. And then we're seeing some tours being run that are much shorter timeframes, smaller groups, um, but it's primarily domestic. But for the most part, travel is just, is, has been halted, um, but it's not gonna be halted forever, but expectations are gonna be different in the next six to 18 months. Um, we do see once travelers start to think about traveling in the future, a preference towards leaning to booking with a tour operator or an agent because of their local knowledge, right? Because of their local knowledge of what's happening on the ground with COVID-19 restrictions um, and any safety requirements they can institute. So we do see um, good value for the local operators and also agents that are gonna be happening moving forward. And then also COVID-19 is really, you know, technology was important moving previous to COVID-19, but it's really pushed the industry forward a lot um, in the demands travelers may have when they go to rebook a tour, when it comes to clear communication, you know, flexibility, contactless booking options as we're gonna cover here today. Um, the, on the audience today, we have WeTravel existing customers. Uh, we also have non-WeTravel customers. Um, there's also a mix of, you know, customers that are offering private only, right? They don't have direct bookings from their website, right? And there's also customers that have bookings on their website, right? So we're gonna cover all of those. Uh, but just wanted to identify that really quickly before we jump in, that we do have a good mix and we are gonna be sending this out to a pretty good mix uh, of customers. Um, so we'll talk really quickly here about the traveler's current thinking. There's been a lot of surveys that have gone out over the last couple of months. And what we did is we kind of looked, pulled a couple of the surveys out and tried to look at, you know, what are some of the themes that are there to then formulate out this survey or formulate out this webinar, and then also be able to go through and pull out um, what's, what are some areas you could focus in on? Um, these first two surveys uh, I wanted to point out were from Longwood Miles. And what they did is they just looked at potential travelers in the future and what was gonna be top of mind for them. Um, one thing that's gonna be top of mind, you know, up 
up on the upper right is a clear and thorough hygiene plan, right? Um, and then on the bottom left, as you can imagine, factors impacting decisions to travel in the next six months, you know, 50% of travelers say COVID-19, right? Um, it doesn't mean that they're not gonna travel, but that's the number one thing that's top of mind uh, when they're considering booking a tour. Going on here to the next two, uh, the Adventure Travel Trade Association did a really good one. Also Get Your Guide along with Arrival did one. Um, the Adventure Travel Trade Association, a couple things that came out of that was, you know, clear communication, right? You can see that top one there. I expect transparent and clear communication. Also flexibility, again, completely understandable if you're booking a tour and there's no guarantee it may run in the future. Uh, and then contactless payment options um, during the booking process. And then Get Your Guide and Arrival also did one out. Uh, and the number one thing there when it came to concerns was around hygiene standards. But again, it doesn't mean that travelers aren't going to travel uh, given the current situation. Another one that, that's pretty common in the industry is Focus Wire. Uh, and one of the things they looked at was how likely are travelers to search on multiple search for multiple operators on multiple devices. And they found that, you know, on average, travelers, when they're searching right now, are going to be visiting up to 18 websites, right, before making a decision to book or when they're planning for the future. Another thing to think about is someone who's gonna travel in the next you know, 12 months, they're gonna be okay with an elevated level of risk, right? They know coronavirus is out there. They're gonna be okay with an elevated level of risk. However, they're gonna have some boxes that they wanna get checked off, right? They're gonna have some things that they're wanna gonna make sure that the tour operator or the agent um, can provide them while they're making a booking decision. And so from the surveys that we took a look at, you know, we kind of pulled out three themes from them. Um, and we're going to frame out this webinar from those themes. And a lot of them tie into on the right side there, that customer booking journey, right? You know, there's the customer booking journey is a little bit different for every, every company, but this is just a general theme, right? Of, of what your traveler is going to go through before they decide to make a purchase decision. The first thing you can see there is, you know, there is an increased likelihood to shop around. Right. We do have a lot of customers on the phone that, you know, they have an existing book of business that do a lot of repeat tours. Customers will lean towards you because of the trust that's built up there. Um, but if they're not able to get, say, destination safety information or if there's a concern that's brought up that they can't get addressed, they may be more likely right now to shop around. Number two, they're also going to want to know the, the safety information locally. Right. Uh, what's the updated safety information in that area so I can make the best possible decision. Um, when I'm booking and can I get updated up to the point where I'm going to leave that tour. And the number three there is uh, flexibility and online payment options, right? You know, if you have the ability to provide options for flexibility around refunds, also offer contactless payment options. Um, what I'm going to do right now is send it over to Maria Claudia. Um, she's going to go through, you know, just on these notes, some must haves that you can take a look at your website. You know, websites have been around for a long time, but COVID-19 is bringing up um, some areas on your website that you can place some extra attention to during this downtime so that the recovery starts to pick up, you can help maximize your conversion. So uh, Maria Claudia, I'm gonna kick it over to you and also move because the sun just came up behind me and nobody can see me. <laughs> so I'll send it over to you. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna start then. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, so as Luke said, for this section, I'm going to focus on highlighting some findings and research that has been performed on um, travelers' behavior when booking online. And I'm going to give you some examples of what you could do to meet these needs. Some of them might be kind of obvious, um, but there are certain things in your website and in your company processes that you have maybe put aside before COVID-19, maybe because of lack of time, maybe lack of resources, or maybe just because it worked for you that way before COVID and you thought no major changes were needed. And I think we are all guilty of that one. Um, however, as Lucas stated before, travelers' expectations are going to be way higher. They will demand more from you. They will be, uh, there will be more competition. The competition is going to be more fierce than ever. So it is very important that you take this downtime to uh, ask yourself some questions and see where you can improve to be on top of your game when travel resumes. So I'm talking about websites and because you have to treat your website as one of your most important conversion tools. And this is easily disregarded, especially because we are always focusing on so many things. You might be focusing on social media platforms and Google advertising, 
on selling through online travel agents, and the list goes on. And um, the truth is that you can have the best tours in the world with breath breathtaking views with the most professional guides. But if you don't have an equally great website, you're going to lose customers. In fact, um, according to Focusrite, which is a travel industry research authority, the um, average conversion rate for direct bookings is only 1%. And this includes hotels as well, but tour operators are on the same boat. So, this, so the things that you have to be asking yourself is, where are these 99% going? What can I do to convert more of these 99% people that are leaving my website? So uh, I'm going to start off, if you can uh, help me change in the slide, look, please. Thank you. I'm going to start off by showing some must have you need to consider to achieve this. So you see this list. And first of all, have a good website. This is a no brainer, but I'm going to explain in one minute what I mean with this. Then so show social proof, offer easy communication, offer online payment options, and have a user-friendly checkout process. All right, so let's go to the next slide. Uh, I'm going to start with having a good website. And a good website for your travel company, it's more than having a good design. Um, the navigation has to be intuitive. It has to be well organized. It has to be logical to your clients so they can find what they need, how to talk to you, how to book for you and do it fast, both from their computer and a mobile device. And I'm going to quote what Luke said at the beginning. Remember that travelers are on average visiting 18 websites on multiple devices before making a decision to book. So at least, at the very least, make sure to cause a good impression, make it count. So we can move to the next slide. Here are some examples of great websites. All of these can vary, of course, according to your needs. Can we go to another one? Another good example, just so you can have um, an image of what a good and well-organized website could look like. And then we can go to the next one uh, regarding first impressions as well. So make sure that you're also showing social proof because according to research and also by focus, right? Actually, 83% of travelers uh, say that reviews help them making the right, the right decision. 80% rate at least six to 12 reviews prior to booking. And 53% won't commit to booking at all until they read your reviews. So maybe you're collecting reviews on TripAdvisor, maybe you're doing on Google reviews, whatever method you're using, make sure to put it in your website and put it somewhere visible. Uh, TripAdvisor, for example, has its own widget, so you can in less than two minutes insert it in your website. And same thing with your reviews in other platforms. There are services such as Elfsite that will help you display in your Facebook reviews in your website as well. And remember that reviews bring credibility to your brand, okay? So don't forget and don't be afraid to ask for a review. Um, be proactive every time you have a happy customer. Um, now we can change this slide. Um, another thing here, it's we have already covered a good website and good impression. And uh, unfortunately, this and having stellar reviews are not enough. Communication with your clients has to be easy and has to be timely. And in fact, if you see the figure here, 70% of customers expect getting help online either immediately or within five minutes. And uh, it is nearly impossible to be available 24 seven or have enough staff to attend queries as they come, especially now. Um, and I know right now might not be a problem, but it will be when travel resumes. So there are solutions in the market that provide you with tools that can help you guide and visitors around your website when you are not around and keep them engaged with you. And uh, it doesn't matter if the visitors are not ready to buy it. Maybe they haven't even contacted you. 
but you want to guide them to your best selling tours, for example. Maybe they are, uh, or maybe they are interested, interested and are asking you some questions before making a decision or got a stuck in a part of your website, maybe got a stuck while paying. <laughs> so uh, offering a proactive chat, live chat will help you keep them engaged, will help you convert more. And even though they require uh, some investment, they can boost sales and eventually help you save costs on online customer support. Because uh, one thing that you have to think about is that it is easier to manage multiple, multiple conversations uh, through the chat than answering one email at a time or staying at the phone with one customer at a time as well. So we can go to the next slide. And uh, okay, so this is my last point. And uh, there are many things you can do to optimize your website but I decided to focus on the most important ones. And all the points that I have covered before are not going to be worth your time if you're not offering an easy way to book online. Um, for those two of you who offer tailor-made tours that maybe don't have or don't want to put book now buttons in your website because your tours are fully customizable, don't worry because Luke will cover some tips for you in a couple of minutes. But since many of you actually sell tours in your own website, I'm going to show you an example of how an ideal booking flow should look like. So we can go to the other slide, okay. So um, first of all, take less than one minute, a couple of seconds, and uh, I would like you to take a look at this website and spot the things that you think they are doing right. Just a quick look. I think it is pretty uh, self-explanatory if we can go to the other slide, Luke. So you have the social proof right on the top, right? The design looks great. The website looks pretty organized. If I want to communicate with them directly, I have either their Facebook or WhatsApp number or a live chat right at the bottom. And now if you scroll down, help me please help change in the slide. Um, you even have a selection of the bestsellers, the most popular tours, with the option to find out more just by clicking. And then I'm going to move now to the book now button, which is the main call to action. And even though it is not shown in the slide, the book now appears in different parts of the website. And we also see the option to customize trip, which is great. But let's say that I just want to book, I'm ready to pay. So, all right, there, there is a pop-up on the screen, um, but I'm still on their website. I'm not redirected. This is an example of how we travel looks as a pop-up. Um, but if you're using another provider, make sure to ask this question, this is an important tip, don't redirect them to another page because it, it adds, adds hassle to the checkout. Um, I'm going to go ahead. Um, now I'm going to uh, choose my dates and fill out my details in your reservation form. And then now my debit card or credit cards or my US checking account. I have this additional ACH option here. And then I'm done with that and I'm booked. And I will receive an email notification and a copy will be sent to your company email as well. So as I said, I use we travel book now button example, but regardless of what you're using, this is what an ideal booking flow should look like if you're selling tours directly on your website. And if you're not, don't worry because Luke will cover uh, the tips for the tailor-made ones. Um, so before finishing, I would like to pause for a second here again. And uh, I would like to ask if any of you are listed, are listed in OTAs, you can put it on the chat. It is private, so you can just send it. Um, yeah, such as to Radar, Gate Your Guide, Kim Kim, even TripAdvisor, if you're listing your tours. Yep, got TripAdvisor yeah. and TripAdvisor is mostly. Yeah, so there, the, the thing is that I, I'm not going to discuss about whether you should do it or not. I think there are many benefits when you list your tours in OTAs. 
And I think uh, this should be an important part of your overall strategy, actually. But um, if we go, yeah, so they have a huge budget in marketing. They are going to um, make your tours more visible worldwide. And in exchange, you are going to pay a commission. And this commission can be very high. Uh, keep in mind that you might be paying 20% or more for each booking. So if your sales strategy is heavily dependent on this channel, you can be losing quite a lot of money. Um, the thing is that we can go to the next one. And did you know that 52% of people who find you through an OTA actually go to your website? Um, most of them don't, won't convert with you though. So what you need to do is try to do your best to capture these visitors and make, make them book with you directly. And by making sure you cover the tips that I have mentioned before, uh, you should be ready to get more direct bookings. We can discuss more on that later. And then last but not least, make sure you're offering up-to-date information of COVID-19 in your website. As Luke said before, travelers will want to be more informed. They are informed. They, they want to be more informed than ever. And if you're offering flexibility with your cancellation policies, for example, make sure it is very visible in your website and your booking pages. Actually, Luke will cover that as well. Um, so these are some examples of how these COVID updates could look like, make them prominent. And we can go to another slide. So um, the recap here is that you have to look at where you are right now and ask yourself which of these points you could improve. Maybe it is your website. Maybe it is your communication with your customers. Maybe it is your online reputation or your online booking process. Make each of these items count and you will be ready to convert more bookings when travel resumes. So now I will keep, kick it over to Luke and he will explain some important things to consider, some additional things and some we travel tools we have to help you in this process of revamping your online booking process perfect <clears throat> thank you maria claudia and that was that was fantastic you know and i think it's i mean it, websites have been around for a while there's a lot of great websites out there you know but as we you know some of the points you brought up as we start to recover you know it, it's going to be a slow recovery um, in some areas but as we start to recover you know, inquiries uh, are going to be much lower than they were. Traffic may be lower. So it's going to be really important to check some boxes off on your website to just make sure, like Maria Claudia said, you know, if they're visiting you on a TripAdvisor site and they just happen to go to your website to check something out, if you have the ability to offer an online booking, just make sure that's on there. Um, if you don't have the ability to offer online booking, that's okay as well. Um, and then two tips, if anybody on the call ever decides to lead a webinar and choose a new location to talk, uh, make sure you pay attention to the time of day uh, and understand when the sun's going to rise. Um, also call your local city to see if they're going to cut down any trees. Uh, we have a tree trimming truck that just uh, pulled up across the way. So I hope that the sound does not get too loud. Uh, if it does, I will go ahead and move. But um, I'm going to move on to okay. my section here. Uh, two more things I want to talk about. The, the first one here really quickly I want to touch on is the power of mobile, right? Um, I'm, I'm guessing everybody on the, on the call right now has a smartphone in front of them, right? And your travelers do too, right? So these stats that I'm showing here shouldn't really surprise anybody, right? I just wanted to throw them out there that, you know, a large majority of searches are done on mobile and emails are open on mobile and communication is opened on mobile. And the reason this is important to, to take a look at right now is, as I mentioned, you know, inquiries for travel proposals that are going to be sent out for custom tours they're going to be lower right now and so it's going to be more important to make sure that you can convert more of those inquiries as they start to come in so a good exercise to do is you know take a look at how many electronic touch points you have with a traveler during the booking process and there's two pieces to that it's you if you're offering custom and private tours also if it's direct from the website and just ask yourself how many do the customers have the same experience booking with you that they would on a desktop or on a mobile device? And if your customer is required to utilize a desktop for a majority of the booking process, 
that increases the chance that that booking is not completed. This is much more relevant for custom and private tours, right? Because there's a lot more customers that may be offering an online option should that be on your website. Um, but test both of them, right? And, and if you have, if the traveler is, has to be on a desktop computer to complete that booking, there's an increased chance that they may not be able to complete that booking. We're gonna walk through some tips today, um, some solutions that we travel offers to give them the same experience, no matter what device they're on to really help out with the conversions. Um, so now I'm gonna walk through and go through some tech solutions. Um, this is also a section we're gonna be sending out to our existing clients to remind them of what's available to them um, as they start, as travel starts to pick back up. Um, so four areas I'm gonna, I'm gonna cover here, and this is tied into the traveler wants that we discussed at the beginning. Um, you know, how to communicate, you know, destination safety info, right? How to offer flexibility, contactless payment options, you know, and then just timely communication in general. Um, this is just as important for custom and private tours as it is that can be that tours can be booked directly online. Um, a larger portion of my section here is going to cover custom private tours because we have a lot of clients on WeTravel that are doing custom private tours. Um, and we've seen those requests actually increase percentage wise uh, over the last few months for people wanting, you know, a custom packaged offer. Uh, for later this year or early next year uh, in certain areas. So the first thing I'm gonna cover here is, and I'll break down these slides between what the traveler is gonna see and then also what your team would see on the back end with WeTravel. So uh, one trend we're seeing right now of, of tours that are, that are being converted and booked right now um, is the, the company is putting their company safety policy, the destination safety guideline, and the transportation company, if applicable, on the booking page, right? So that the traveler, when they're making a decision to pay for that custom tour, right? Um, they can, those questions are answered right there, right? And then again, really important on the left side, we have the desktop version of what that booking page looks like. And then on the right side, we have that mobile version, right? So wherever that traveler is viewing that uh, booking page to make a decision to buy that tour, they get the same experience, they get the same information outlined to them very clearly. Another item I'll focus on, and this is only for our customers, um, is social proof that Maria talked about, right? Um, so social proof for a private tour, we travel automatically loads them on the private booking pages, right? Um, so that anybody that's going ahead and considering booking a tour with that company right on the booking page they're going to see live reviews from travelers, right? They don't have to log off the booking page and go to your website or go to TripAdvisor or go to Google to check reviews. They've got reviews right there, um, right in the private booking page to help that, to help increase the chances of a conversion. Uh, next thing I'll talk about here is around flexibility, right? Those were in some of the surveys from uh, Longwoods, also from the Adventure Travel Trade Association, get your guide. Um, starting on the left side, when it comes to flexibility, telling them your cancellation policy during the booking process and making it a required question. What you can see there on the left side is the mobile view for what travelers will see when they're in the process of booking a tour through you when using the WeTravel system. And you have the option to do required or non-required questions, but really important right now to make sure the traveler is aware of your cancellation policy. And if you have the ability to offer as much flexibility as possible Another big trend we're seeing right now in almost every single tour that's being booked are payment plans, right? Uh, and being able to offer payment plans out to the traveler. You can see there the two views. I got the one in the, in the middle that's a desktop and then the one on the right that's the mobile version. Again, as the traveler is going through and making a decision to buy, they're gonna see they can pay a deposit and then they're gonna know exactly when their payments are gonna be due in the future. We're seeing this in almost 100% of the tours uh, that are being converted right now, um, offering those payment plans. And the percentage usage is much higher than it was prior to COVID. Um, from, the, from the company view, right? So uh, what you would see, what our WeTravel users would see and what you would see on the back end um, when you were building out, you know, a, a payment page to send out, a booking page to send off to your customers um, when it comes to flexibility is a lot of options around payment flexibility, right? Um, that's been a really big, uh, need prior to COVID, and it's even been an even bigger driver now that we are in this COVID situation. So through WeTravel, you can schedule up to 12 payment plans. Um, our system will divide them out evenly for you, or you can choose your own amounts. 
If you want to only collect a small deposit now, but larger ones trending up closer to the tour, you can 100% customize that. You can also allow the customer to um, pay a partial payment. Uh, and we just launched auto payment. Um, so if you want to be able, if you want to have uh, us automatically deduct the customer's payment, you have the option to set that up. Um, again, what it does is puts the flexibility in your hands, also provides you the option to offer even more flexibility to, their, to your customers when they're booking. Another area for the company view that you would see uh, through WeTravel, um, and this is just a reminder for a lot of our clients when it comes to flexibility, uh, what you're looking at here is a dashboard you know, of a tour that has you know, various customers that are signed up to go. And part of the flexibility piece comes into you know, being A, able to offer the flexibility and B, easily do it, right? Um, you know, a lot of companies right now are spread out remotely. Unfortunately, a lot of companies have reduced staffing, right? Um, but customers are still gonna have the same demands when it comes to the level of service they're gonna want before they actually execute that tour. So being able to easily find customer booking details. And then also, once a deposit is paid, being able to provide flexibility, right? Somebody may wanna do an add-on option, or they may wanna switch a package, um, modify a payment plan, right? Also issue a refund, you know, refunds are 100% free through WeTravel, right? So um, anything that your team needs to do with the customer after that deposit's already made can easily be done here, uh, be easily be done be anywhere you are, uh, and also doesn't take much time. Next thing I'll swing over to is contactless payments, right? Um, it's one of the main things that WeTravel offers uh, is contactless payments. Two, two payment methods uh, that, that we're offering through the platform, they can pay with ACH, right, from their checking account. Also, they can pay with a credit card. You've got the two versions there. We got the desktop version and then the mobile version on the right. Again, very important, especially through the payment process um, to offer a similar experience, whatever device that customer is on. You know, online payments have grown a ton. Um, over the last you know, 10, 15 years, security is also top of mind. Um, so through the system, making sure you're offering you know, encrypted transactions uh, and then real-time availability, um, or not real-time availability, real-time validation. Uh, what that is, is you know, when a customer is entering in their credit card number, once they enter the credit card number, the type of card that it is will pop up. So the customer knows that they entered in that credit card number correctly. And it just limits the booking errors, right? It makes it so they don't put in their credit card number, it's incorrect, hit booking, and then they get a fail, failed payment error. So again, just making that process for booking uh, easily for your customer and also saving you some admin time on the back end. Next thing I'll cover here is uh, timely communication, right? You know, again, customers, as we saw in the surveys, are gonna want timely communication. So on the, starting on the left side, uh, mobile view, quick reminder about the cancellation policy. Be clear, be upfront, uh, but let the customer know about it even before they pay their deposit. In the middle, there are various options for automated payment receipts, um, emails for payment reminders, uh, and making sure that they're done timely uh, and efficiently through the system and the customer can take action on them when they get one of those emails. And then on the right side, uh, customers are gonna be able, when they wanna make additional payments, log into their own branded dashboard that's branded to your customer uh, branded to your company, uh, see the booking summary, activity log. Um, they could contact you directly from there. They can add booking options, um, really making sure they, they get as much control as possible over knowing what's going on with their booking, um, but also adding an additional option as well or being able to contact you very easily. Time and communication for the customer view, right? So two things I'll, I'll point out on this one. Um, one. One really big feature that was used a lot before COVID and we're seeing, you know, increased use now based upon the percentages of companies that are taking bookings um, is the team member setting. So if you've got a, a tour leader that you wanna give view only access to a tour tour to see who's signed up, um, if you have additional team members that are spread out remotely and you wanna be able to give them access to certain tours that they're sending out to see if they've converted or who's been booked on that tour, you have customizable access to add in different team members and give them different viewing uh, permissions depending on what you want to have. And then on the right side there, um, looking at an internal dashboard of a trip, you know, that has customers that are signed up to go, um, being able to just easily send, you know, an individual traveler a message um, or send a, a group. If you've got a small group of people that are going to be going, click one button and send all of them a message uh, really makes it so that, again, 
if you are working remotely um, or if for, for unfortunately the staffing has been reduced, you can still give them a first class level of experience uh, before they actually go on the tour with you. And so just to summarize, um, you know, some of the we travel features along with the, you know, the traveler wants, again, destination safety info, make sure to clearly communicate it on those booking pages so the traveler has that information as they're making a buying decision. Um, offer flexibility with refunds if you have the ability to offer payment plans, um, contactless payment options via ACH or also credit card, um, and then time and communication, right, um, up front before the payment's due, and then also time and communication anytime the customer has a question or you need to send reminder emails out. Um, so in summary, you know, with what we talked about at the beginning, you know, again, travelers current thinking, increased likelihood that they're going to shop around right now right? They will lean towards an existing book of business that they've already worked with. But if they can't get, say, some destination safety information or some, you know, something else from that, they may shop around right now. Um, also flexible contactless payment options. Uh, take a look at your mobile plan, especially for custom and private tours. If the booking experience is dramatically different on a mobile device on a desktop, see it, look into improving that, right? Because it's going to be really important as as the conversions start to trend up and inquiries start to trend up. And like Maria Claudia talked about, you know, on your website, have social proof, right? Um, have some contact options to be able to have them reach out to you, ask a question, um, and then also have online booking if applicable, right? Really important right now to just have that option available, especially if you're using an OTA, if that customer visits your website, give them the option to book with you, right? Um, can really, you know, save you money uh, and uh, lower your customer acquisition costs uh, from, from getting that same booking. And then on the right side there, we just have, we do have a special offer for uh, th folks tuning in or seeing the video that are non-We Travel customers right now. Um, we have a We Travel Pro special plus a 30 day money back guarantee if you wanna see a demo before October 8th, includes full onboarding and support. You know, so anybody out there that you know, has the time right now to you know, take a look at their booking flow and booking process. We would love to speak with you, do a quick comparison between the current system you have set up um, and what we travel could offer you. And then the next thing here are some resources. We're gonna send these out in the recording and the reminder. These are the surveys that we talked about here on the call today and some of the data points that we reference. And so now we'll go ahead and kick it over to the Q&A. Oh. Guys, the chat is private, so we are going to be able to see your questions. And uh, as they come in, we are going to start answering. And there are some questions that, that have been coming. And uh, so, got, um, you want to go with the first one, then, Maria? Yeah, because well, there is this question. There are OTAs that don't put the name of your company in the listings. How could I get visitors to my website? Uh, yeah, there are some OTAs that do that, and there are some easy, easy ways that you can find a workaround, and um, they are going to list your packages with pictures, right? So make sure that your travelers are wearing some type of merchandising. It can be a t-shirt with your company name and logo. It can be a hat. Whatever you are showing as part of the tour that includes your name, it's going to help traveler know who is uh, actually doing that tour and they can go to their website. Then same thing with reviews. If you're collecting reviews with them, for example, if you're asking your traveler, say, hey, please leave a, uh, review here in TripAdvisor or leave it in uh, Tour Radar. Make sure that your customer writes your company name. You can ask ask for that. So people who are reading reviews, who they actually do, as I said, more than eighty percent are going to read reviews before booking with you. If they can find a name, they can they are going to go to your website. So there are some workarounds. And uh, definitely recommend to do that. I, it was a great question. Thank you. Um, I got a couple um, more. I'll, I'll read the next one. Um, so two questions from the same person. So please describe the legality of passing on a credit card convenience fee to customers. Uh, I keep reading that the only way to do it legally is to offer full credit card price and then give um, customer a cash discount. Do we travel? You give them two options. So they have the option to pay via ACH or they can pay uh, via the credit card. Um, you know, we can't really give legal advice on it, but uh, a lot of that surrounds, it comes with when you're only giving the customer one option to pay and forcing them to pay that fee, right? So 
um, we'd be happy to discuss more, but we've got two ways the customer can pay um, and works, works really great for a lot of our clients in the US market. And then second question from that company, um, I have a full website with full tour pages. Uh, seems that with WeTravel, I need to create an entire mini web page for each and every trip. Is there an easy way to do it if I just want a we travel book now button? Fantastic question. You do not have to create an entire mini web page. Um, so great question. You can 100% create a book now button um, during the flow. Uh, we would be able to show you how to do that. So uh, book now buttons are very easy to do and uh, just reach out to us on a demo. And we can walk you through there. So perfect question on that one. Um, I'm going to go through. Maria, you want to take the next one? Yeah, so someone is asking how much are live chats? Uh, it will depend on your needs. There are different options in the market. I have put in the slides. We are actually going to send you the recording of this webinar with the slides so you can click on the information that we have uh, put in the slides. Um, if you cannot afford a live chat now, make sure to at least provide different ways of communication. It can be Facebook Messenger, it can be WhatsApp, but make sure that you can be um, um, fast to answer during working hours. And uh, also if you're using the payment gateway, try to ask them if they are available with a live chat while the customer is paying if they get stuck. Because for example, for we travel, if a customer is having a question while they are putting their credit card details, they are going to be able to talk to us. So that's uh, another thing that you can do. Um, and yeah, for the ones that are asking for information about we travel, uh, as, as, and also the one that asked about the book now buttons that we can show you how to do it. I'm going to leave you here in the chat. You can just, um, put information on the form and we can contact you. Hold on a second. Yeah, you can just fill it out and we will make sure to contact you with more information and show you around so you can, uh, we can answer all your questions. Um, I got another question here related to marketing. Um, does a uh, question about your role in marketing, does we travel push out tours to social media? What is your approach, if any, with Google ads in addition? Um, not all the tours list on your explore trips. Uh, answer to that question, we don't do any marketing. Um, so we actually don't do any marketing for you. You can easily market your trips uh, through WeTravel. Uh, you can share them on social media, put them on your website. Uh, we do have a marketplace, um, but it, we don't do any SEO for it. It's, a, it's mainly for our legacy wellness and yoga clients that use it quite a bit and they love it. Um, but as far as a marketing platform, uh, I wouldn't recommend, we're not, we're not a marketing platform, but we do make it very easy to, uh, to market out the tours. Can you help me look sharing the publicly? The yeah, form? I think it just sent directly to me here. Let me go ahead and just and send it. There we go. I'll send it out here right now. Uh, okay. Let's see if I can get it to work. <laughs> Okay. Well, for some reason it's not sharing out. Uh, Maria, you want to take the next question? We just had a couple that came in. Um, no, actually I have, I would like to get more information about we travel. So again, uh, we are oh, going to share yeah, the yeah. form. Don't worry that you can yep. fill it out. It's, uh, it's not copying for some reason. Um, another question that just came in is you mentioned websites that have um, a chat feature. I think Maria, you talked about the websites that have the chat feature and they were wondering yeah. what those websites are, uh, the companies that offer the chats. Um, I think we can just send them out in the follow-up email. That would probably be yeah, good. Yeah, of course. Yeah, email. yeah, for sure. In the form, we have this, um, this information and actually on the logos of the companies that provide live chat, you, you're going to be able to click and be redirected to your websites. These are not services that we work with, but um, you can actually contact these companies and see what, which, which one of them are uh, giving you the things that are more targeted to your needs because are, there are different type of chat. There is proactive chat, there is live chat, there is the chat box. So it's something that it's very personal and that you have to talk based on what you need the most. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, Customers asking, can you uh, slide 30 about the money back guarantee? What does it really mean? Um, what it just means is if you're not happy with we travel in your first 30 days, you get 100% of your money back. You could, do, you could book a demo, we could explain more, but um, we want you to be able to you know, try it out and see if the system's been working for you well. Uh, there's another one. Um, 
I think the, the main question on this one is if I price my tours in dollars, can somebody go to my WeTravel booking form and pay with euros? We accept six different types of currencies. We do accept euros uh, through WeTravel. So I would strongly recommend, um, you know, booking a demo. We can talk to you about how you're pricing your tours and what currencies you want to do. Uh, we got a lot of clients in Europe. Um, we also accept pounds, uh, Australian dollars, um, uh, Canadian dollars, and South African rand. Uh, so there's three main currencies that we do select. We do accept through the system. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Maria, yeah, I'm just kind of going through. Yeah, there is one more question about the OTAs. If they have to price the tour the same price in their website as in the OTA, most of them will ask for that because it's um, revenue parity. So you have to check the terms and conditions of your OTA. But the thing is that if you are listing your tour at the same price in the OTA and you have the same price in your website, you are, uh, you are not paying that 20%. You're not losing the 20% by having a customer book the tour in the OTA. You know what I mean? Uh, so yeah, it, would, it is a great question. And, and I think that's why that I am, was talking and was making a very, um, uh, a huge highlight on how much of an effort you should put on your own website so you can capture a client there instead of paying to the OTA. That's mm -hmm. what I mean. Uh, last two we'll take here cause we're coming up on our time. Um, first one is, uh, please expand on refunds or free on WeTravel. Um, so what that means is, uh, I mean, you, you, get, you, you get credit back for all the processing fee, right? So um, instead of losing out, because when someone say pays with a credit card, they may pay a credit card processing fee. Our processing fee is 1%. Um, so you get all that back. So if you refund somebody, you don't take a loss on that refund when it comes to the processing fees that you were charged uh, to take that payment. Um, and then the next question they, that an individual had was around the cancellation policy, travel companies needing uh, their customers to read and agree or e-sign to the terms and conditions. Does we travel allow it? Um, they can read and agree uh, right in, the, right in the, the booking process and you can make that a uh, required question. Again, it'd be good. You can just book a demo. We can walk you through a quick tour of it to show you exactly how that looks. But 100%, you can make it a required question. They can read and agree to the terms and conditions before paying. Um, and then yeah, I'll, I'll just sort of take one more really quickly, Maria Claudia, for yourself. Um, what is the average increase or conversion rate using OTAs? I don't know if we have that data. Um, I really don't know. The thing is that if you are listing with an OTA, they have such a huge marketing budget that you for sure will get more visibility. Yeah. So uh, I, ha I don't have the exact numbers, but it depends on the OTA. It depends on the marketplace that you're using. Um, okay, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do one more here. We had another question come, come, come in. Uh, from mm -hmm. a client's perspective, do they prefer to pay via their bank um, or credit card? 57% 57, 57 of the transactions in the US market are done via ACH through WeTravel. So that, that should answer that question uh, about you know, a little bit more than half um, are, um, are paying with their, with their checking account uh, as opposed to a credit card. We're up at the time limit, um, so we're gonna end it. You know, you've got our contact information. We just sent out that demo request form. We would love to speak with you. We can do a quick comparison for you. Um, and then for our existing customers on the phone, we're also gonna be sending out some, some snippets of this information, again, to help you as you're looking to rebound, um, be able to convert you know, as many of those tour requests as possible. So uh, thank you all for tuning in. On behalf of WeTravel, my name is Lucas. Uh, hope you have a good rest of your week and we'll, we'll see you in the future. Bye. Thank you very much for tuning in and have a great day, everyone.